You may have heard of the classic can you reverse a linked list algorithm question. Now, in this video, we're going to talk all about the linked list data structure. We're going to talk about the different types of linked lists. So we've got singly linked lists, doubly linked lists, and circular linked lists. And we're also going to talk about the common methods and the time complexities associated with this particular data structure and its methods. Let's talk about the linked list. So it's important that you watch the video on memory and also arrays because in that video we discuss how arrays work and linked lists sort of build on that concept. So just as a quick recap, static arrays, you need to have, um, or arrays in general, you need to have contiguous blocks of memory for each element in the array. If it's static, you allocate that memory ahead of time. And if it's dynamic, you can look at the number of memory slots that are available in your RAM and find a sequence of memory slots such that you're able to have enough for the array that you're dealing with at runtime. Now in that video, I sort of introduced the concept of a linked list because essentially where the array and the linked list differ is in that the linked list, they, the linked list has an extra memory slot that it needs. It needs the additional memory slot um, to have a pointer to the next one. So I sort of talked about that in the dynamic array part in the video. The array, you actually need contiguous spots, whether it's static or dynamic. So the linked list is what was more explained where you have the pointer to the next value. So make sure you check out that video and I think that will help clear up any confusion between a dynamic array and a linked list. In a singly linked list, we have an array of elements in which each element is connected to the next via a pointer. The first element is known as the head and the last element is known as the tail. So let's say we have this example here. So we've got the numbers two, four and five here. So this first number here, that's what's known as the head. And the last number, that's what's known as the tail. And you may see this represented more like this. So it might look like this. This is the case of a singly linked list. As you can see, there's an arrow between the two and the four, and then the four and the five. And what this represents is that all right, well, two is the first element in the list, and that's what we can look up because we have the variable assigned to a memory slot, so we know the index of the head. But that's not necessarily true for the elements after that in a singly linked list um, because rather than having contiguous slots in memory assigned, as in the case of arrays, we have a pointer to another memory slot. And just to bring this point home, I might just draw a quick diagram that, or a recap of the array and memory video here. So this is going to be a crude drawing, but what we're saying here is we have a two here. And then in this memory slot here, we point to the next bit of uh, memory, uh, the next slot, and then that will be a four. And the benefit of doing it like that, unlike in an array, is if this slot was taken, um, or sorry, if this slot was taken here, you could simply say, well, I've got this number here to four, and then corresponding with four, we have a pointer to another spot. So we can skip that spot and then put the number five here, for example. So these pointers allow us to point to different memory slots 
um, rather than an array which you need the slots to be next to each other and then you can look up the index like that. One of the limitations of this linked list compared to an array is since you've got pointers pointing to the next memory slot rather than a sequential or contiguous uh, number of bytes next to each other, you can't do the lookup. So if this was an array and you want to find this element here, you could just say, okay, well, whatever the array is in the first index, and that'll give you an O of one lookup. Whereas if you want to find this four here, you can see that these aren't placed next to each other, or they're not guaranteed to be placed next to each other because you might have a memory slot blocking things. And because that's the case, you sort of have to follow the pointers. So you know where the first one is because that's assigned at the start where the head is. So you have to go to the two, but then you have to look next to the next memory slot, which is the address of the next um, value. And then you see that that refers to a four. So essentially what we're saying here is if you want to um, access or append an element to a list of numbers, um, you're better off using an array data structure because that's all of one. Whereas this sort of traversal, uh, that's going to be a O of I, where I represents the index. So for every number you have, or whatever index you're looking for, that's how many um, sort of lookups you need to do. So it's not O of one. So we saw in the array video that when we push an element to an array, that that's O of one. However, if you want to um, insert an element at the start of an array, let's say you wanted the number one here, well, you'd have to move all of these elements over one. You'd have to shift them all over, and then you could put the one in there. Whereas in a linked list, since you've got the head here, you can simply just sort of pre-pen that. And then that's an O of one operation. And that's the only significance, or that's the only reason you would want to use a linked list uh, in most cases. Uh, it might not be the only reason, but the only time complexity benefit a linked list has over an array is the ability to push to the start of the list or push near the start. So in every other case, an array would be better uh, unless there's some specific thing you're trying to do. We've talked about the singly list, uh, linked list, but there's also a doubly linked list. As the name suggests, it simply has two pointers. So if we were to have a doubly linked list with the values, let's say, Let's say, well, let's choose some different values. Let's say we have six, seven, and eight. Like the singularly linked list, we're going to have a pointer to the next value, but then we can also have a pointer to the previous value. And if you look at that in memory, basically, let's say we have the slot six here. Now we need one pointer to point towards the next slot which let's say is going to be here, which is going to have the value seven. Um, and in the case of this, there is no previous one. So let me just put a five here at the start here. And then we need another pointer for the previous one. So we can say, okay, well, we might have a pointer here as well and then this is five now these two pointers might be the other way on uh, but you get the idea you need an extra memory slot to allow for that there's one more linked list and that is the circular linked list and there's two variations of that so the first variation is the singularly link list or the singular circular link list and then you can just sort of make the whole thing into a circle 
by pointing the tail to the head. Now in a doubly linked list, you also need to point the tail to the head, but you may want to go the other way on. And then you go back to the start there. Um, so for a linked list, it's sort of by default going to be a singly linked list. Um, but you might get a case where you need to go backwards if you can't, if you find yourself not being able to solve a question going just forward or the, it's got a bad complexity or something like that, you may want to use or consider the doubly linked list uh, so you can easily go backwards. Um, and then if you need to sort of go right round, you can use the circular linked list. So let's take a look at some of the key linked list problems and also some implementation details. And we'll also be able to see how it's going to be used in the hash table data structure. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.